The Washington Commanders are an absolute dumpster fire and have been for a while now. So I rebuilt this team with the hopes of one, making the team fun again, of course, two, hopefully winning a Super Bowl or two, and three, for everybody to put their left hand up. Those haters can't stand us, left hand up. Who are we? The Commanders. 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 And shout out to all of you for all the love shown on the 20 year Cardinals reboot. I mean, we had 1,400 likes on that video already, and I didn't even set a goal, right? So today, let's try to up it. Why not? 1,500 likes on today's reboot, and let's just say the next reboot will be dropping, and it's a fun one. And we just recently hit 19,000 subscribers, so welcome to everybody that's new, and shout out to all the OGs as well. However, the main goal in January is hashtag road to 25K. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, especially if you enjoy Madden content like this one. We got a ton of it and enjoy and the qb1 here as of today is of course sam howell and coming into this season i was actually a howell guy i just thought no way he was a round five guy when they drafted him because in the year he was drafted at north carolina um all the skill position players on that team left i believe Dami brown tylen wallace javante williams michael carter probably some more as well so he was left there kind of like that one will smith meme <laughs> so i definitely put some stock in sam howell and i was excited to see how he would do in washington with this team but although there has been some ups there have most definitely been more downs now, whether it's the abundance of turnovers he has or the amount of sacks he's taken this season as well that yes can be contributed to the offensive line but he certainly doesn't really help that at all but this is not me saying this is the end all be all of sam howell right i still got some stock in him like i said i think he can be a solid starting quarterback in this league somewhere else perhaps in a better situation of course because he's got a great arm we've seen him make some amazing throws this season make plays out of nothing he's low-key got some sneaky athleticism to him as well and you may ask yourself what do you mean by sneaky athleticism He's what? However, or I guess you could say however, <laughs> it's too early. However, with their pick likely being in the top five with a very good quarterback class, a new coach most likely in the offseason with bringing in a new regime, new system, he's probably going to want to pick his own guy. So we're probably going to cut ties with Sam Howell here and just move on to another direction. It also hasn't been looking good for him because every time Jacoby Brissett gets subbed in, he goes crazy. <laughs> Like I swear, he'd just be throwing beauties left and right, and he deserves to be playing football right now, man, because I, in the year where I've watched guys like Tim Boyle, Easton Stick, Trevor Simeon, Jaron freaking Hall, like, <laughs> my boy Brisket deserves better. Because honestly, last year on the Browns, he was solid, man. He was probably better than Deshaun Watson. RB1 here is Brian Robinson Jr. And did you guys know that he got shot? I swear they'd be bringing that story up every time they mention his name, but I, I guess to be fair, it is kind of crazy that he is playing, and he's actually pretty decent, right? He's still only 24 years old, 82 overall, start of element as well, so he's probably going to be our RB1 for the majority of this video. And also, did you know that he got shot? Antonio Gibson's the RB2 here, who was awesome as a rookie, if I can recall. I'm not sure what's happened. I guess he just hasn't really developed. Chris Rodriguez also got to look out for. And at wide receivers, the one is the best player on this offense, of course. That's none other than Terry McLaurin. And man, I love Terry. I think the world of him is a player, right? but I just, I feel like he doesn't get fed the ball that much. And I don't really know, but at this moment in time, he is 29th in the league for receptions made. And I guess I just want them to force feed him the ball a little bit more like a true standout wide receiver one that I think he honestly is because every time I watch this team, I swear it's Byron Pringle getting targeted. It's Jamison Crowder getting targeted. And when they finally give Terry the ball, he makes an awesome catch and gives them a big chunk as well. Unless he's playing my Dolphins, he gets the Jalen Ramsey assignment. <laughs> I like Curtis Samuel as their wide receiver too. He's a fun little gadget player. You can move him around and use him in all sorts of packs. Packages. And a big part of why I invested in some Sam Howell stocks at the beginning of the year is because I really thought it was going to be a breakthrough year for Jahan Dotson in year two now. Because I thought he was honestly really good in his rookie season. I think just injuries kind of held him back, but we saw a lot of glimpses, right? He had a lot of touchdowns as well, his catching, his catch radius as well. But year two has just been a little disappointing. I think he only has around 500 yards so far. We only have one game remaining as well. But now that I'm here, I haven't given up on him. He's going to be a big part of my plans. At tight end, you got Logan Thomas, who's so old now. John Bates is here, but then you got my boy Cole Turner who was one of my good friends growing up him and I used to play basketball and football every single day at recess and look out for my boy who's a big red zone threat standing at 6-6 and they utilized him like that at Nevada as well whenever they got to the goal line or into the red zone they threw it up to him for these contested 50-50 balls and it was more like a 90-10 so you best believe I'm gonna try to develop him the best we can here to be our tight end one and I was actually with him over the summer for 4th of July and we chopped it up of course but I remember him telling me one thing that has stuck in my head till this very day and he said, and I quote, the commanders are going to be a really good team this year.
I don't know about that. This offensive line, I mean, oh my god. But as I mentioned earlier, Sam Howe most definitely does not help himself either. At left tackle, you got Charles Leno, who's just old now. Sam calls me. I swear he was actually quite good at right tackle as a rookie, but they've moved him inside the guard now. Negates, we are going to be looking to improve center most definitely. Stromberg. Hidden Dev, rookie, there's something there, there's upside, hopefully we can develop him into a solid starting right guard in this league, and then Andrew Wiley on the right, probably not it either, we're gonna have to revamp a lot of positions on the O-line. And I mean hell, you even got Chris Paul here, who just made an incredible block on Sexy Dexy for the Commanders to score a touchdown to cut the lead down to 42 to Tommy DeVito. And also, let's make my boy CT the tight end one. And I guess while we're here, we'll make Jahan Dotson the wide receiver two as well, just because of the upside. And this overall defense was one of the units I was most intrigued in coming into this season, but oh my god, if there was one word I had to say to describe watching it, it would be this. And I guess they've kind of hit the reset button themselves, trading away guys like Chase Young, who was a former defense rookie of the year, who they chose super high up at number two in the draft, trading him to the freaking Niners for like a day three pick, if I'm not mistaken, and then letting go of Montez Sweat as well. Which, to be fair, they did get themselves a second round pick from Chicago, but damn, he has been good. And your fun fact of the day is Montez Sweat is currently the sack leader for not only the Chicago Bears, but the Washington Commanders as well this season. <laughs> and like, I guess I get you don't want to pay them or whatever, but I mean, what the heck? Because at defensive tackle, you still got some studs like a Jonathan Allen who I honestly believe is so underrated I think he's honestly one of the best at his position as well you just don't really hear about him because well, they've been loose and it's like man with a player this good on the defensive line it's almost annoying in a way that their defense has been so bad and I know he's sick of it as well because in an interview this season earlier on he said um I I'm gonna let him do the talk <laughs> does it get frustrating when that yes it does I'm f***ing tired of this I'm tired of this bullshit it's been seven f***ing years of the same shit. Tired of this. And the number two is Deron Payne, of course, who's definitely no Jonathan Allen, but I guess he's, he's all right as well. Now, they did give him a big contract in the offseason, and he has definitely not lived up to that so far, but hopefully for us, he can refine his form from last season, or else it's going to be it's gonna be one thing and one thing only. <laughs> now, the cornerback room is going to be decent for us, right? Kendall Fuller is a good player. Benjamin St. Juice is solid and still relatively young. We, of course, got their first round pick last year in Emmanuel Forbes, whose life in the NFL definitely started off a little rough, but I always say it, cornerback is one of the hardest positions to transition from college to the NFL, that is, you know, so if a rookie corner is struggling, a rookie tackle is struggling, a rookie quarterback is struggling, just gave him some time. The bus label was thrown out way too often nowadays, but more than anything, just way too soon, right? And we got a lot of goals in this video. Of course, a Super Bowl, build an awesome team, and next up in line might just be to develop Emmanuel Forbes into a standout CB1. And CB4 here is Jartavius Martin, another rookie here, but out of Illinois this time. So CB is low-key not only a little deep, but we got some upside for the future. The safety group is also good. Derek Forrest is good, and Cam Carl, ever since his rookie year, I've been a big fan of him. By the way, I swear this picture is like four years old, bro. Like, he doesn't even have that hair anymore. Look at this, they have his face scan, hello? <laughs> Can someone explain to me how they did all the hard work to get his actual face scan in the game? But they still aren't able to change his main picture here, which is something I could do in a literal second. Not to go on a little tangent here but it's little things like that that really bother me about this game just change the pictures every year refresh them you know like deron payne's picture is so outdated as well if it was up today it would look like this like it's just something that's irked me ever since i was young i remember when my dad always used to buy me the new madden or new 2k or whatever and he would ask me you know what, what's really the point here it's isn't it the same game and i was just like there's new player faces there's their players on new teams you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's all i really cared about was the gameplay trash maybe but there's new faces. <laughs> and as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of Cam Curl ever since year one, where he was a top candidate to win defensive rookie of the year as well. But ever since then, he has developed into a very solid safety nowadays. So kill a cam, you're going to be our starter, no doubt. Also, if you get the kill a cam reference, leave a comment down below. And then you got linebackers, which is OK. It's not the best. You got David Mayo. I prefer ketchup. Cody Barton is a solid linebacker in this league, to be fair. And Jamin Davis, I was very excited to see how he was going to develop under Ron Rivera. And he hasn't necessarily boomed, but he definitely hasn't been bad. And as the years have gone on, he has trying it upwards, so hopefully that keeps going. And of course, at punter, you got which way? Tresway. And at kicker, you got Joey Sly, who if you asked him to kick the ball across the entire ocean, he probably could. But if you asked him to hit the ocean, he would probably miss. <laughs> And after all that, you could probably tell this team really isn't all there yet. It definitely is in need of a rebuild. And as I mentioned, Sam Howell, there's a world. There's definitely a universe I could see him succeeding here as the commander's QB1. However, with just me at this moment in time with a top draft pick and good quarterback prospects as well, I think I'm just going to move on to another direction because I just feel like this team needs some life. It needs new energy. It needs good energy. It needs to be exciting once again, right? I want to be watching this team on the TV and standing like this. When you have the pressure, they know that it's hard to be her. I'm sending you, Sizzan, Ari, my love. So 
let's get this rebuild started. Isn't this the dude that got shot? Um, first off, though, I'm here in week 10 and start today. We have a, we have a breakout DB. <laughs> Percy Butler, I'm glad you texted me two novels, but can you tell me who it freaking is? Oh, it is... Wait, who's Percy Butler? <laughs> Hey, yo, what? I thought that was like our assistant GM or something. <laughs> oh my god, am I just a casual or what? Who is... This guy has a breakout. And I mean, he's only 23, so if he does go up to star, there is a world where he finds himself a little role on this team. And with 100 mil in the back, we do have some players to resign, including Cam Carl, Kendall Fuller, Antonio Gibson, and Curtis Samuel. Cam Carl, to our delight, does have green interest, and he's still just 24, so I'm going to bump it up to a five-year deal, bump down the money, just... Okay, that's on me. That was disrespectful, Cam. <laughs> Kendall Fuller is 28 now, but he is still good, okay? Just not starting off on the right foot with any of these players then. Dude, I had such high hopes for Jabril Cox coming out of the drop. I thought he was going to be a steal, but he really hasn't been too good. He's honestly sucked call. Team A legend, Troy Apke. No way, okay, my boy just went up to star just like that. Hello, 10k XP as well. Don't mind if I do. The heck, I was not expecting that. We lost 10-7, but I, I guess we only held them to 10. <laughs> Killer Cam is back, don't worry about it. And you could say the same thing about Fuller of Kendall. And for Prospect Spotlight, here is the problem. Our pick is either going to be number two or number three and that makes a world of a difference because it's either going to be drake may or Jaden daniels who we also actually already have fully scouted anyway so who cares <laughs> i was gonna say which one should i put it on but never mind <laughs> we're likely to lose curtis samuel so i'm gonna put one on Jalen polk here out of u-dub also this o-line definitely needs a lot of work so i'm gonna go with the center jpj here out of oregon let's go ducks and you know what i'm gonna go with another duck brandon Dorless here out of oregon we could be a little gem for us later down the boards in a big position to need and after losing zero to 28 to the cowboys in week 18 we end off the year four and 13. sam howell ends the year off with 4009 yards 20 22 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, though. He was nice on fantasy football, but he's not going to be our guy. Brian Robinson's stats are actually disgusting. 3.6 a carry, 8 touchdowns, 769 yards, but... 3.6 a care. Ooh, Jahan Dotson actually led the way for yards with 981, six touchdowns as well. So he kind of boomed in the second half of the season for us. Of course, the first half um, up to week 10 are the real life stats, but after that is all Madden simulated because they suck and haven't updated it yet. McLaurin, Andrew, 27 yards, four tutties for him. Curtis Samuel, okay. Logan Thomas, okay. My boy Cole got 300. And he even got his very first touchdown. Cody Barton, 129 tackles. TFL, 17 for Deron Payne, 16 for Jonathan Allen there as he leads the way for sacks with eight. Two Hill, four and a half. Deron Payne, three. Jamie. And Davis 3. We definitely need pressure, especially off the edge. And the Dolphins finish as the sixth seed. My worst nightmare has happened. Uh. Texans versus Browns as well. You got the future GOAT playing the actual GOAT. The Bills end up losing in the wild card of the Jags. The Dolphins lost 30 to 33 to the Chiefs. Their Texans win as well. Uh, AFC Conference Championship was Chiefs, Ravens, Eagles, Niners. The only reason I'm showing you guys this is because we're really close to that point. So this is kind of like a realistic output of what could happen. <laughs> and the MVP should be Lamar Jackson. If this game's not stupid, this game's kind of stupid. In development trades, oh, offense, nothing. However, on the defense, we got how many? Zero! Lamar gets the last laugh, though. Super Bowl MVP and the Super Bowl itself. Let a naysayer know then, Lamar. Huh? Fifth year option for Jamin Davis, I mean, sure. However, Gibson, Samuel, Cody Barr, and everybody else here, I'm gonna let go. Including Mr. Ocean Man himself. But not that Ocean Man. If you know, you know. Free agency 90 mil in the bag, and we got guys like Tyron Smith. Kyle Duggar, B-Wags, Leonard Williams, Jordan Brooks, Curtis Samuel. Ooh, imagine him on the Commanders. We could get the final evolution of Sam Howell. <laughs> Farming Simulator Goat is here. Ooh, Dalvin Cook just signed with the Ravens. Who wants to see a Ravens rebuild with Dalvin Cook? We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. Head coach historic record, 0%. <laughs> That's not gonna help. <laughs> hey, ain't gonna stop me from trying. Might do something a little crazy here. Kyle Duggar is interested in joining us. I think Kyle Duggar is an awesome player. Now, we don't really need safety, but what if I moved him out to outside linebacker? Mm, I mean, we are in the hunt, but there's so many suitors. Let me just grab a Mac Wilson Sr. then for one year. Although Kyle Duggar is still here, the choice is his. Contracts are reviewed. Dorrance Armstrong is still here. However, we get Cleveland Farrell and Mac Wilson Sr. What else did I want? It was Ezra Cleveland who went to the Cardinals. Now let's hope and pray Dorrance Armstrong chose us. He didn't. We get day. Tell you what, if we can get Jalen Polk, his teammate Jalen McMillan here as a day three projection could be one of the steals of the draft. We might need a guard for the future as well. So Graham Barton, number two is on you. And if there's a world JT to a Mola while falls to us in round two, I think I will love it. I think I kind of aced his name right there as well. I'm just saying. <laughs> now I have not checked what pick we have. However, if we go to mock draft number three, we will find out in three, two, one. Number three. However. The top two picks are going Marvin Harrison and Lotu projected in the mock, that is. I don't 
I don't really want to go Caleb Williams just because he's not going to be there at three. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I already did a rebuild with him as well. And sorry, Commies fans, it was to the Giants. So even if he's there, I'm either going to be eyeing Drake May or the Heisman winner, Jaden Daniels. And also we need to put more respect on Michael Penix because he just balled out against Texas. He's an absolute dog, literally, and he has a beautiful arm as well. Expect a rebuild with him very soon. But it won't be in this one as the Bears have the number one pick and do go Marvin Harrison. The Cardinals at number two go with Liatu Latu and now at number three we have our choice. And although I was initially thinking of doing this rebuild with Jaden Daniels, I think I'm going to go Drake May. Because I think the Commanders are most likely going to end up with the number two overall pick in real life. And at that pick, it is a consensus. Drake May, no doubt about it. I think he's right up there with Caleb Williams as a quarterback prospect. And we're going to be switching out one North Carolina QB for another. But hopefully this one can live up to the legend. That is Mitch Trubisky. Drake May, you are the franchise QB. That is just not freaking Drake May. It's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who's that? Actually, I'm not gonna lie. I think there was a top comment in my last video talking about the player models, and I did not do it this video, obviously. <laughs> so my bad, that is on me. That is on me. Okay, Caleb Williams is still on the board. Hello. Huh? Wait, what am I doing? Am I drunk? <laughs> what? Why did I just do that? Wait, what in the world? I had plans of going JPJ of Jalen Polk or Jalen McMillan or J2 Tua Molawau could have potentially, what, what am I doing? I, 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 I don't even know. In instead we go Jeremiah Trotter, Landon Jackson, Trevin Wallace, Gabriel Murphy. Tell you what, the CPU didn't do a bad job. It just wasn't any of the guys that I had in mind. And as you can see, Drake May is here, and I don't know how Bangle did it, but he got a real life face scan of him as well. But the main reason why I went him over Jane Daniels is pretty much because I think he's two and a half years younger. Well, and of course, I think he's a better overall prospect as well, right? But Drake May is a certified baller. I think he can truly change this franchise around. And I still can't believe I just simmed the whole draft. Am I okay? And when you look at this, Caleb Williams ends up going to the Giants anyway, and we're going to be battling him in this division for years to come okay jt actually ended up going 15 anyway so also the cardinals in round two went jj mccarthy for whatever reason but we went jeremiah trotter look who went right after him brian thomas jr are you like uh, uh, Omeka buka goes at number 12 oh my god dude do i Well, we're here in year two now, and um, not a good first impression, if I say so myself, as after taking Drake May at number two overall and being ecstatic and over the moon, new coach Pomv ends up passing out drunk and missing out on the rest of the draft. <laughs> and our assistant GM, who had no idea what he was doing, chose bust after bust after bust. <laughs> now, but like for real, hopefully these guys can actually develop into actual starters and good players for this team, because assistant GM, your legacy's on the line. We're also going to change that real quick. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's just, it's just not Drake May, okay? <laughs> okay, I think head 25 looks better. Bro, when do you get to team A? <laughs> Oop, okay, we're currently at team A.5, I guess. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Dude, I cannot find the right head. So no head? Okay, I think this one's pretty good. Head 199, you are Drake May. <laughs> and the year two squad is quite similar, to be honest. We got a big upgrade at QB, though, with Drake May, but I wish I had JPJ here. And I wish this wide receiver three was Brian Thomas, Emeka Ugbuka, or Jalen Polk. If only somebody didn't pass out drunk on draft day. Target passing, let's go. Are you? But what do you know? And as I mentioned earlier, Emmanuel Forbes, I will do whatever I can to get you to CB1. Well, I guess I could just move him there, but y you know, however, we get no luck from the Madden gods. And I ask you one more time, which way? And look, I just hate chasing tackle. If I didn't cheese it a little bit, this would be me to the running back. Hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait a second, we might have a problem here. I'm trying to do rushing attack. But Tresway's still in. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Dude, I am not gonna lie. I'm having a rough time doing this running back one because Brian Robinson is the slowest running back I've ever used. Okay, and get a load of this class, right? Number one is a tackle, two is a tackle, three is a tackle, five is a tackle, eight is a tackle, nine is a tackle, and 10 is a tackle. What is this tackle class? Oh my God, this might be the worst quarterback class of all time. And at midseason, we are currently three and four bottom of the NFC East. Hey, on the bright side though, Drake May is a superstar. And if you couldn't tell, our three-star scout is going on offensive tackle. Week nine against the six and two Eagles, we get another L, but we do have a breakout. And tell you what, it's gonna be the rookie Landon Jackson. Hold the Bears to less than 100 rushing yards or just get him one of the defensive stats, just one. We end up beating the Bears 24-21 and Landon, if 
you can't just get one stat. You are dead to me, brother. Your first one is going on a deep throw out of the U, Elijah Griffin. John Weaver, a round two to three projection center. And because Landon is a fraud, we might need a better pass rusher. Oh, great. We have the 9-0 Cowboys next. And in Drake May's rookie season, we end up bottom of the NFC East. However, an 8-9 record is not too bad. Passing leaders, Mac Jones. <laughs> this game is drunker than me during the draft. 22nd for offensive yardage there. Drake May didn't look like he had a terrible year, though. Oh, my God. The defense was terrible which I guess really isn't too surprising. Drake May just barely a smidge under 4K yards, 27 touchdowns though, and 18 interceptions in year one. Not a bad rookie year. I'm not gonna lie, Brian Robinson is just not getting it done, is he? 864 yards, 3.8 a carry only, 10 touchdowns is nice though. However, Terry McLaurin had one of his best years, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns as well. Diami Brown actually stepped up, 815 yards from Jahan Dotson, 722, and my boy Cole with 662. Jamin Davis, 137 tackles, leads the way by a long margin. Jonathan Allen, 15 TFL's 10 for Landon and Cleveland Farrell there. Six and a half sacks leads the way for Jerron Payne. Landon Jackson, five and a half, four and a half for Jonathan Allen, but still, man. The pressure is minimal. And Jamin Davis and Emmanuel Forbes both had two interceptions, but Jamin Davis had a pretty good all-around year there. Could he go up to superstar? We love you, Josh Allen. I love you, Josh. And Kayla Williams just edges us for offensive rookie of the year, Drake May number two. Offensively, no Devies over here. Honestly, Turner could have went up to star. I think he had like five touchdowns as well, so not a bad year for a tight end. Jamin Davis does not go up to superstar. I have not gotten one Devi in two seasons. <laughs> and the Niners smoke the Bengals in the Super Bowl 35-14. Brock Purdy wins Super Bowl MVP. Last season, he won MVP as well. We are really seeing the modern day Michael Vick. Contracts Jahan Dotson, fifth year option, of course. Kendall Fuller on another one year. How could I say no? Derek Forrest and Benjamin St. Juice. I think I'm going to let both of them walk. Honestly, Sam calls me. I would like to bring back. He doesn't want the biggest of contracts as well. So I'm going to bump it up a bit just to make sure. Okay. And I mean, we could franchise tag him here, but it would cause me an arm and a leg. <laughs> Diami Brown had a good year, but just no Cleveland Farrell. I got to just kind of reset this team in a way. Whoa, this is a name you never see here. Jalen Waddle. We also have a team as franchise QB, Drake May, by the way. That would be nice. Javon Holland's here as well. Two of my fins, Amari Cooper, Trey Smith, Batonio, Walt White, Teller. What is this free agency class? Ryan Jensen, Greg Newsom, David and Joku? Hold up. Hold up. We might be cooking here because look how much money your boys have. And because you never, ever see him here, that makes me just want to sign him that much more. I'm going to give him an absolute bag here, but it's still yellow. And he has so many top offers as well. Our status is not in the hunt. However, I feel like David Njoku is a guy you never really see here either. So I'm going to put in a bid for him. We can't get one Finn. Let's try to get another Javon Holland. One of the best free safeties in the league. And his interest level was actually green as well. So if we put in this deal... We might be near the top. And we are currently in the hunt for Hollywood Vaughn, but there are a lot of suitors for him as well. So I'm going to bump it up then because I honestly think Javon Holland would be a game changer. And we're now comfortably number one with him, Wyatt Teller, David and Joku. Quiddy pays here as well as Jalen Warren. Let's go ahead and review them. As they are all gone, my signings, we get Hollywood Vaughn, Wyatt Teller, and Joku, and... Jalen Warren, who did I miss out on? It was Quiddy Pay who goes to the Rams. Um, and also check this out. Waddle went to the Vikings to pair alongside Justin Jefferson. And we also grabbed Charles Amenahu to help out our D-line. And hopefully with all those big additions, it can turn all of these reds into greens. Ooh, look at this. We have trade offers for Sam Howell. The Titans are here. The Saints are offering us Trevor Penning, which is not terrible. Josh Newton here from the Rams. Levante David X Factor. Of course, he's 35 and already an 81 overall. However, we're going to be doing this one with the Rams. You're getting Ernest Jones and Josh Newton from them. Two quality players that can slot in our defense right away. Going to be giving them Sam Howell. They have... Some random guy at QB. I'll show you guys after this. This Diggs, who's our third string running back, and then two fourth round picks in the future. And they were a team heavily interested in Sam Howell because their starting QB before that was Joe Milton. <laughs> Colors here tonight. Milton under pressure. Hit as he throws, just lofts it up. It is an interception. So uh, good luck to Sam in LA, I guess. First private workout is going on receiver Cole Hayden here, physical out of Maryland. And John Weavers, ladies and gentlemen, is a round one talent. I'm going to do Luke Saunders one more time just to see his talent. And our last one's going on Raheem Kidd, 6'8 left tackle here out of Georgia. As we are going to have pick number 13. Not as high as I was hoping, but obviously our record actually wasn't too bad. Luke Saunders only round 1-2. to two. Raheem Kidd, the left tackle, also round 1-2 to two talent. Okay, I got a plan here. I'm going to trade back from 13-22 to 22 with the Lions here. I'm also getting 86 in this draft and some future picks as well. And hopefully my plan works. There's a receiver and a tackle that I want. And the receiver goes by the name of Chris Sandridge and check this out he's a slot archetype standing at 6'9 
9. 227. He looks also like the best receiver in this class. His ratings aren't the best to remember, though. He is freaking 6'9. But he has A awareness, A break tackle, A spec catch. I better hope he does. I checked all the other receivers out, the guys that I private worked out as well. They did not look that good. This guy is a hell of an archetype to say the very least. And he ends up being hidden development as well. He is 6'9 with 92 agility, 89 change of direction. This guy is the weapon of dreams for any quarterback, any young quarterback, especially Drake May. You're gonna love him. <laughs> and in round two here, I'm gonna move it from 13 to number two with the Steelers, as well as giving them some day three future picks. And everything has gone to plan so far because the man that I want at number two is going by the name of Devon Goodwin, the power archetype 21 year old right tackle out of Oklahoma. He looks like a beast. There were a lot and a lot of tackles as you guys saw in this draft class, but this guy was one of my favorite guys, especially down the board as well. I think this is pretty good value. However, he's only normal dev, so I will kill all of those tackles in this class. All of them. And I chose a normal one. And I'm um, here in round three. I am praying that that center is still here, and he is. John Weaver, the man out of Clemson. We know he's a round one talent. We know he's about to be an absolute gem, and is going to be our starter day one feels good to actually draft my players this time <laughs> wayne ellington the shooting guard in the nba is now an outside linebacker i guess <laughs> and changed skin tone but at number 22 in the third round the lines pick of course i'm gonna go alex rush here an outside linebacker out of bama only normal and in round five your boy got himself a hidden development kicker david cash <laughs> and team b finally has themselves a kicker <laughs> draft recap time that was a pretty good draft if i say so myself sandwich is only 72 overall 73 for good win there but Reaver, of course, we knew he was going to be a beast. 75 overall, Rush is a 68, and David Cash is a 71. Guess that wasn't too crazy, as I would have hoped so. An 82 overall tackle, but he did go number one running back here. The line or the Vikings got two running backs who were top five talents in this draft. And heading into year three now, this is probably the best the squad has been, especially after a successful offseason, bringing in the likes of a Javon Hall into this team. However, there is one position... That we need a star and in 2025 now we're hoping drake may can take that next step up in year number two so i'm willing to give away a few picks in order to get ourselves a superstar pass rusher if i was just to put number 14 on the board we would get braxton jones kane taylor Britt, jerry judy jedrick wills there ain't no superstars here Ooh, Jalen Phillips is here, though. Looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way. A player like Montez Sweat is exactly what I'm looking for. Trey Hendrickson, he's 30 years old now, still an 89 overall, though. Okay. For Greg Rousseau, they would want a 2027 first round pick, and that's kind of it, so we would keep ours next year. We'll keep that package in the back of our mind. What the heck? There's actually an offer from Miles Garrett. Three first round picks and three second round picks. <laughs> like, F it? Should I just do it? <laughs> and look, I've been getting a few comments about my trading lately, and look, as much as I do just want to get the best players, of course, the story to me means more than anything. There has to be a story behind every player I trade. I always try to think of some funny scenario, or some realistic scenario at least, for a guy like um, Miles Garrett here, who's long-term contract tied down to Cleveland. I'm not going to trade for him. Why would they trade him? You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't really make sense, right? So, like, kind of realism, but kind of a story behind it as well. For a guy like Rousseau, he only has one year left on his contract. The Bills have so much money tied up. They have money tied up in a guy like, okay, never mind. Vaughn Miller retired, but his cap hit was heavy, so maybe they can't pay him. That's why we could grab him for maybe on a cheaper price. Something like that, right? You know what I mean? I could just trade for Justin Herbert and have a quarterback now, but what's the fun in that? However, a guy like Bosa, 30 years old, also one year left remaining on his contract. He's only starting to regress now. Now, what? <laughs> but you get what I mean, though. Even if I see like some really good trade packages, sometimes I just will not take it, and that's on purpose. Because of what's really the fun in just trading away all my picks. Yeah, let's just get all these great, amazing players and build a god squad right away. Because what makes it fun for me personally and unique to you guys as viewers is, you know, choosing players in the draft, developing players as the years go on, having a story behind it, having that connection with the player that you drafted, that you love. And from time to time, I want a bust, right? Huh? No. What I meant was, I want to choose a bust from time to time in the first round, a normal development guy that sucks low 70 overall because that's what makes it fun and then when i draft a player like john weaver or any other great players that have developed in my other reboots it just feels special you know and don't get me wrong i will make trades from time to time with my draft picks as well you know especially if we want to win right now and we're desperate but at the end of the day i just don't like trading to trade right as much as these rebuilds are about of course just winning it all and winning a super bowl the storyline and the build-up is more important to me to be honest and there's no problem with doing that of course but just for me personally i think this is more enjoyable and more of a challenge you know um also i hate everybody on this team right now <laughs> There is an offer here for Josh Allen, but it is quite pricey. And same story for Brian Burns here. Two first, a second, and even more. And tell you what, I think a guy like Alex Highsmith is actually perfect. Because they're about to pay TJ Watt, George Pickens, and Najee Harris both only have one year left. As well as Kenny Pickett. If 
if they want. And with Pittsburgh really liking Herbig here and want to further his development, Alex Highsmith at the age of 28 now is the perfect time to give him away. You see what I mean though with the stories? Yes, it's a BS story, but it just makes it feel much better. These trade packages aren't that crazy. A first, second, and third here. First in 2027 again. Ooh, I believe that was very similar to the Greg Rousseau one as well. He was only a first actually. Highsmith, obviously the better player right now. Superstar dev, plus three overall, but he is 28, three years older than Greg Rousseau and would cost more. Actually, I can't do math. It was plus two overall. Maybe we try like a 2028 first instead of a 2027. Not even close. Well, all right, then we'll try the 2027 first by itself. And it is so close. So much so that I could probably give him Armani Rogers. And it will probably be accepted. A 2028 six round pick. And ladies and gentlemen, Greg Rousseau is a new Washington commander. Our best edge immediately by far. And with him now at left end, this defense looks much improved. And the offense comes down to whether Drake May took that next step up to superstardom or not. However, Emmanuel Forbes, I will not give up. I'm honestly about to get... And at mid-season, we're currently 4-3, and three, third in the NFC East. However, everybody is pretty close. And the Giants are 5-2, and two, huh? I think they took Caleb. So this division has Caleb, Dak, Jalen Hurts, and Drake May. <laughs> that is actually insanity if you ask me. The wide receiver, we still don't have. We have a weekly award winner. It's on both sides of the ball. Jahan Dawson just went crazy with 150 yards, 10 receptions, had three receiving touchdowns. How did he not get a breakout in Landon Jackson, hey? Three sacks, 13 freaking tackles. Not for real though, how did Jahan Dawson not get a breakout after that? Player negotiations and Terry is here. Jonathan Allen is here. Now we do have a lot of money, 111 mil, of course, Greg Rousseau would trade it for. Who has no interest as well, that's kind of concerning. And I may be playing a risky game with these two guys, but I'm gonna wait till the end of the year. However, not for Greg Rousseau though, who I'm gonna give a ton of money. Actually, what does he want? career historic record do we bank on ours getting higher at the end of the year however his rating will keep going up so i think if we just offer him something now we can just find ourselves in the middle he signs back okay welcome back greg rousseau and now that trade looks like a big w if you ask me i'm not gonna lie jamin davis kind of wants a bag because he's an outside linebacker which is quite annoying I'm just going to give it to him just because I want to keep Jamin Davis here. And last but not least for now, five-year contract to the star development man, Percy Butler. Week eight against the Patriots, we win 27-13. Week nine against the Chargers, 42-21 with a breakout QB. And this would be for Drake May to go up to superstar X-Factor. As we're going to have the Eagles at home here, they're actually bottom of the division right now at a four and five record here. We beat him 21-7, no four touchdowns, and no 400 yards either. First private workout on Kyrie Sharpton here out of Texas. Him alongside Rousseau would be incredible. I'm also going to put one on cornerback Marco Briscoe here out of Mississippi State because there's a chance we don't re-sign um, Kendall Fuller. And last one on Brian Colbert, a right tackle out of Texas. And low-key, after three wins in a row, we're now in a pretty comfortable spot to make the playoffs. Let's just pray Madden Sim doesn't cuck us. <laughs> and we end up going 12-5, winning the East outright. Whoa. And ladies and gentlemen, Drake May took that next step up second in the league for offensive yardage, 18th on defense. But the headlines are all about this guy in his sophomore season, 4,500 yards, 35 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 73% completion rate. He is officially a franchise QB. He may have had that before, to be honest. I don't really know. 14 touchdowns though for B-Rob, 1,040 yards, 3.8 to carry. Honestly, not a terrible year. Oh my word. 3,000 yard receivers here, Jahan Dotson was unbelievable in the slot 17 touchdowns 1236 yards McLaurin six yards behind him seven touchdowns for him Sandridge in his year one 1012 yards for the 6'9 slot remember is he special only a star I was hoping maybe a superstar with that type of archetype I've never seen that but still he might win offensive rookie of the year putting up a thousand yards and five tutties and Joku not bad as well this offense is woken up for sure Jamin Davids 118 tackles for him the new contract man Gregory Rousseau 16 TFLs 13 sacks for him in his first year here drawn Payne, 15 TFLs 8 sacks Jonathan Allen 13 and five and a half there and then drawn Payne, 8 sacks but Landon Jackson at seven himself so not bad Javon Holland the big offseason acquisition four interceptions two for cam curl and josh newton hold up i also think we have hold up i also think we have our center to is it this guy no it's not <laughs> i don't even know my own team john weaver the center is a star. and look at this the vikings finish as the number one seed in the nfc i wonder who they drafted and nothing too surprising in the afc the chiefs are the one seed steelers number two seed though you're welcome for not taking alex highsmith from you <laughs> i'm actually just quite curious who the vikings have they have michael Penix. okay that would be fire man and Okay, I, I forgot about this. They have Jetta, 
They have Justin, Jalen, and Jordan. <laughs> My, what is that? Hell, put me at QB, I'd succeed. <laughs> oh, and of course they have Hawkins. Okay, yeah, the Vikings are an absolute juggernaut. However, let's hop in for this wildcard round. You guys know the wave. The Rams are an 83 overall. We are an 86. They have a very old team, though. So, you know, the new kids are on the block, and that's us. Let's see if we can hold our own and take down the Super Bowl winners of just a few years back. First quarter on its way, they get the first touchdown to go up 7-0, get a field goal to go up 10-0 here. Our offense is stalling out in the worst way. We get a field goal to end the half, but we're down 10 points, which is not great. At home as well, we need the crowd to get behind us here because what is going on? Here we go. Three-point game, fourth quarter, no way. No way. You are kidding. Oh, wait, I did. I traded him there, didn't I? I, I just forgot. That was a few days ago. <laughs> but we're playing Sam Howell. This is kind of crazy. Also, Drake May has two interceptions. What's my guy doing? However, the Rams have punted us the ball here with 5.45 to go. Three-point game. We're going to start on our 20. Drake May and this commander's offense. What do you got for me? A third and seven now. Drake May out of the gun. A huge conversion needed. Drake May scrambling out to the left here. He does not look... He does not look comfortable at all. And Quiddy Pay has three sacks. What in the world? We punted onto their 17, though. Our defense needs a big stop here, but they are converting every first down, third and two. And it is also after the two-minute warning, so this stop right here is vital. They hand it off to A.J. Dillon, and he gets more than a first down. We do still have timeouts, though, but we need to get a stop here. We need to wrap him up like that. Third and nine, Sam Howell is in the gun, drops back to pass. And it's a drop. That was great defense from none other than Cam Curl. Stops the clock on a fourth and nine as well. They are in field goal range, however. From the 33 here, the kick is up. And the kick is good. They're going to take a six-point lead, so now it's kind of touchdown or nothing. Drake May, please. My legacy's on the line here. I, we cannot be losing to Sam Howell in the wild card round, especially after the season we had as well. That's just good D. I believe that was Stephon Gilmore as well, so they just have a retirement home going on over here on the Rams. Drake May. Drake May. Drake May. <laughs> Bro, look at how tall he is. <laughs> it's Chris Andridge, the rookie. Drake May said F it. He's down there somewhere. Just throw it high. Just throw it to a high point and let him get it. Oh, my God. That was an absolute dime from Drake May. And Sandridge comes down with it and gets us a touchdown. Are you kidding me? Look at how much bigger he looks than the DB, bro. This dude is a cheat code. And Drake May responds immediately. However, there is a minute and 30 left. We need your defense. Come on, D. You should know Sam Howell better than just about anybody else here. Quick first down to Cooper Cup. Out of the gun again. Sam Howell quickly. And it's another reception for the main man. This is not looking good. They only need a field goal here to win this game. Cup's up to 130 yards. We need stops. And we need him quick. Oh my god, the pick there would have ended the game. As awesome as the bomb was to Sandridge to take the lead, we just, we scored too quickly. Of course, we want to score, but we left him so much time. Sam Howell overthrows his man, which now leaves us with a third and ten. They do still have all three timeouts here. I wouldn't even hate a running play here. But Sam Howell is going to drop back once again. And he caught that? What? Dude, our DB was all over that. They should really just run here, but it's Madden, and it's another reception. This time, Tyler Higby, bro. We may just lose to Sam Howell here in the wild card round. It's, it's poetry in motion, isn't it? Nick Folk, the kick is up. The kick is good, and we lose to the Rams at home as well. That is extremely disappointing. Such a great regular season as well, but... Look who came back to bite us. Josh Allen wins MVP, but look at number four. Drake May already getting in here. Offensive rookie of the year. And could this go to Sandridge? It does. Chris Sandridge gets number one for the best offensive rookie. That is awesome. Ooh, and Drake May wins best quarterback outright. Could he go up to X Factor? Guess we'll go ahead and find out. Drake May and Cole Sandridge, X Factor and superstar development let's go Ooh, Jahan Dotson up to superstar as well and this offense now looks absolutely unreal next year it's only going to get better too which I'm super excited for defense Javon Holland goes up to superstar x-factor I think Wallace even went up to star here but nothing else by the looks of it and the Giants who end up only finishing 10 and 7 this year end up winning it all 17 14 beat Burrow and the Bengals there Super Bowl MVP goes to Matthew Judon that is just not what we want to see and we are back here with 100 mil McLaurin I'm not gonna lie 30 years old now a four-year deal was a little bit steep I'm gonna make it three I'll bump it up a tiny bit though he does have almost full interest so he is back I want to keep Terry I want to win a Super Bowl with Terry and I'm sure all you commanders fans probably want the same and to also give him an actual competent quarterback Jonathan Allen 
Allen, one year deal. Why not? We got a fifth year for Emmanuel Forbes. He's up to an 84, 25 years old. I think I'm going to hold off, but I'm just going to give him a big contract next year. Now, Brian Robinson's an 84 overall, 27 years old. Running back is just such an odd position for rebuilds because they're just kind of so tough to find. Because even if you draft a good one, you kind of have to wait a few years for them to develop to finally put up some numbers. So to have a guy that's already 84 overall, I feel like we got to keep him. And it's not even like he's been good, but I just don't know who else we could probably get. He's back to stay, though. And just like that, the money's cut in half. 51 mil remaining. Kendall Fuller's here. Ah, I mean, he has green interest. Why not? I'm just going to lower it down a bit then. Oh, my boy Cole's here. No mentors at the position and not close to home to Oregon. Yeah, he's quite possibly at the other side of the um of the country there so i might have to bump it up a little bit but i'm gonna pay my boy you already know all my boys eat come on chris paul finally got a taste of the playoffs and now he's addicted <laughs> Whoa, and the first player here is Ronnie Stanley, and he has almost a full green bar. Um, yeah, don't mind if I do. However, that now leaves us with only 16 mil. <laughs> Kyle Hamilton, you never see Kyle Hamilton here. What the heck? All right, some big players here, and we're using every last penny we have. Ronnie Stanley, of course, Traverius Ward on a one-year deal. We are in the hunt for him, and the Kirk Cousins to be a mentor to hopefully help us resign Drake May next year, and just to bring him back to Washington and hopefully win a ring with him as well. That would be awesome. Everybody is gone. And we get Stanley, which is the big one, and we get Kirk as well, but no Traverius Ward, sadly. But Ronnie Stanley, I mean, welcome to the freaking team. I'm going to put another one on Sharpton here to know his talent. Colbert's only around two to three. Another on Marco Briscoe. And you know what? I'm going to put one on this running back because he just looks really good. Look at the draft order here. One is the Browns, two Lions, three Chargers. And Kyrie Sharpton ends up being a round one talent. Not going to lie, though. I just think he looks awesome. I might trade up here. Elite jumping, elite speed, good acceleration, good strength there. Combine, pretty decent as well. But A, finesse moves. B, power moves. B, block shed. Even C, man. B, tackling. A, pursuit. A, awareness. He looks like a stud, bro. The cornerback is a round one talent. Okay, that's a little gem. This could be a huge draft for us. I think I'm going to sim until I want to trade up. I think... Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I think I'm going to go to somewhere at 11, but there he freaking goes. At number five, man. Dang. I think he was number 16 on the big board as well, so that's that's just pain, but he, he did look that good. So at pick 23, I'm going to opt to go with a right tackle. Instead, Justin Stewart, because we don't... That guy we have there right now is not the highest of overalls. This guy might come in right away and be a plug-and-play starter for us. He looks pretty decent. Looks like my favorite tackle prospect. And he ends up being a hidden development, so I cannot complain out of Michigan State. And Briscoe is 40 picks away, so we could risk it and sim to our pick, but I think I'm going to trade up just a little bit. Trading up to 44 here with the Packers and giving away Martin, because we're obviously going to drop this corner, our second round pick, and then some later day three picks in the future years. And Marco Briscoe at pick number 12 in the second round is still here. 6-1 man-to-man. Oh my god, I didn't even see his ratings yet. Elite acceleration, agility, change of direction, everything else there is good. Yeah. This dude's an absolute stud. He's a round one talent with only C awareness as well. 95 acceleration, change of direction, 92 agility and speed. This dude, this dude is the real deal. The real deal. And around three, I'm going to go with right guard Mike Wagner because Wyatt Teller, I believe, is on his last year here and we're going to need a replacement. And Mike Wagner looks like he's the next man up. And it feels very nice to get three hidden developments, especially after that 20-year rebuild of the Cardinals. I just did Stewart's a 72 overall, which is decent. Briscoe, 76. The Wagner, 73 off rip. And the CPU got me Mike Barnes as well as 70 overall. Normal dev, though. But let's go check out this class. And let's, of course, most definitely check out Kyrie Sharpton, who the Saints sniped at number five. He is hidden dev. I was willing to trade up to, like, number nine to ten there to get him because he looks so good. But he's only star. So you know what? I'm actually not too mad about that now. So the joke's on you, Saints. Glenn York, 79 overall corner. This center, I did see him. He looked unreal. 78 overall as well. Decent looking class. And Briscoe was a round one, but he was right on the brink, right on the edge of being a top five talent. So that is an that was an awesome pick for us. And let's go ahead and reveal the corner Marco Briscoe right away. And let's go see what he is, because if he is superstar, I might just make him like CB2 right away, to be honest with you. Marco Briscoe, ooh, is a superstar. Um, I said CB2, but Emmanuel Forbes is still nine ratings higher there, but we're going to definitely, most definitely, definitely make him our CB3. Not sure why I just said definitely, most definitely. We're up to an 85 overall squad now, though. This offense looks ready to do what they did last season. Honestly, they were really good, but now we have Terry back on a new contract, and we have two superstars in Sandridge and Dotson, who both went up, and Joku as well. O-line looks a tad bit better, I think. Why is Stewart not at right tackle, bro? Like, he's literally a right tackle. Yet, he is not at right tackle for me to make the starter right now. Are you... Why? 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 However, Emmanuel Forbes, I still got faith. Oh, my God, Forbes. 
What is he doing? Oh my, I don't think Forbes wants to go up to Superstar. What are, why does he keep slipping? Every once in a blue moon, this one just gives me so much trouble for some reason. Please, oh my god. What in the world? We're two and five. How is this offense two and five? Oh, Jahan Dotson's here, Emmanuel Forbes, Jonathan Allen. And I forgot how we even added Ronnie Stanley. Why Teller's still here? What is going on? We have a ton of money. Jahan Dotson on a two-year deal, of course. Emmanuel Forbes stays for another four. Okay, here's the good thing, though. The Cowboys are the one seed right now, and they're only at four and three. This division is extremely tight. We need to beat the Giants here if we want some life. And we do 20 to 17. We now have the Seahawks who are only two and five. We put up 45 on their dome. Now we have the two and six Steelers here in week 10. We're right back in the mix. 31 16. Here we go. Five and five. We're still bottom though. <laughs> However, we do have a breakout D line. It's going to be Landon Jackson. I feel like he's actually been quite decent for us. Hold the Jaguars to less than 100 rushing yards or just get one of the stats to go up to star. And the number one guy, Henry Houghton out of Clemson, looks like a generational pass rusher. Oh my. I might give up the absolute house to get him. I actually, I, we don't have our first this year, but. I will still give up everything to get him. <laughs> Holy crap. A finesse, a power, a awareness, a tackle, B block shed. Wow. I mean, we know he's probably going to be a top five, but I'm, I, I want to see it myself. Travis Miller, outside linebacker out of USF here, number two. And then I'm going to do a defensive tackle, Kareem Bins here, round three to four projection. I might genuinely give up the house, go get that guy though, but hopefully um, short term here. We can make the playoffs. We went on a little bit of a run there, but it's no guarantee for whatever reason. This squad is so good. Week 18 is here, and we, oh my god, we just squeezed in at a 9-8 and eight record. Wow. That is quite terrifying. 11th offense, so it drops down 9 spots after last year, and then defense, just not good, is it? Drake May, 4,274 yards, 29 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. Honestly, really solid year. Brian Robinson has given us good yardage with 1,115 touchdowns as well, but 3.9 of carry is not too great. He's not too efficient, but he is getting the numbers at least. McLaurin, 1,126 yards this year, 11 touchdowns. Dotson in the slot, 9 tutties for him, almost 1,100 yards. Sandridge, pretty decent. And Joku, um, 700 yards for him. But defensively has been very disappointing. Jamin Davis and Ernest Jones leads the way for tackles made. 20 TFL for Jonathan Allen, 16 for Rousseau, 14 for Landon Jackson. I totally forgot about his breakout. I believe he only needed one of the stats in week 12 would it have been. So right here, he did get a tackle for loss. So if he doesn't get upgraded, I'm going to put him up to star. Eight and a half sacks for Rousseau. So he drops down a little bit. Jonathan Allen with six there, four for Jackson, four for Drompe. Not too many sacks this season, unfortunately. Three picks for Cam Curl, two for Jones and Forbes. In the wild card round, it's not an easy matchup. The 12 and five Cowboys, the NFC East winners as well. However, they're an 87. We're an 88. Our squad is right there with them. Honestly, this should be just a toss-up. And we barely beat them. 31-28. 14-3 Panthers up next. They're only an 83, though. But we are in Carolina. And they beat us. What are with the Panthers? Hello? 14-3 is crazy. And they're the number one seed as well. They're going to play the Cardinals there. Kyler Murray wins MVP. He did not even sniff that in my Cardinals rebuild. So... Thanks, I guess. <laughs> okay, our guy David Cash won best kicker, <laughs> which I guess is something to be happy about this season after a very disappointing playoff loss. Offensively, not one singular dev upgrade over here. Defensively, however, I don't think we got one over here either. And this side was much worse than the offense, so to be expected, but I am going to put Landon Jackson up because he did technically complete his breakout, but I just forgot to sim the week. <laughs> and the Panthers lose. Good. Because they knocked us out 13 and 21. Super Bowl MVP is Josh Allen, of course. And for contracts, we have about 117 mil. And for Drake May's fifth year option here, I'm not actually going to accept it just because I think that would save us some money for next year. Jonathan Allen is a 92. Still a monster. I want you back. Ricky Stromberg, honestly, he can go. Deron Payne does have like full green interest, so we should accept. And since we're losing Stromberg, let's actually sign Wyatt Teller back on a one year deal. Ronnie Stanley's bar is almost fully green as well. He should accept. However, Kendall Fuller, I'm going to let go now. Jalen Warren as well. And we're going to go to free agency with probably around 40 mil. For agency and Tyler Linderbaum is here. Rasheed Wright's up to a superstar as well. Tommy Townsend, Kyle Duggar, Matt Gay, Kendall Fuller. Not the most stacked set of players. But if we need a mentor at QB, we could get Deshaun. 
However, let's bring the GOAT back. And nothing too flashy here, just Tommy Townsend, Deshaun Elliott, Keanu Benton, Taylor Heineke, pretty much just some backups here. And it looks like we get all four of them, so we'll take that. And of course, he's still not at 100%. I'm doing him again. Whoa, Chad Jones on an NDSU here. Round two to three projection looks like an insane corner. We low key need corner with Kendall Fuller gone now. And then I'm gonna do this outside linebacker again. And I have a trade offer for Keanu Benton already. I, I just got him. <laughs> like, damn, can I even talk to him, bro? Top five talent. I'm gonna try. Now it's gonna be extremely difficult without a first round pick this year, but the Buccaneers, let's make a deal. <laughs> like I'm sure we can figure something out, you know, round one, pick one. They do have <laughs> an offer, but it's Cam Crow, Jonathan Allen, and Emmanuel Forbes. I can't really blame them for that. What in the world? They have Spencer Rattler and Davis Mills. Yeah, no wonder you're pick one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this is going to be possible. That right there is all of my best available picks, and it is only orange. Um, yeah, there's just no way, is there? Unless I, of course, give up all of my best players, but that's just not happening. Of course, the one year I don't have my first, man. I, I just know he's going to be an 85 overall X Factor. Henry Houghton, there he goes. Okay, who else did I do, though? The outside linebacker. It's a round one. Hey, now, Loki may be a blessing this guys. We don't trade up, and we round off the team a little bit more because this corner, Chad Ross... We have him at a and Chad Jones, who's Chad Ross. We have him at a 95% now. He looks unreal. Hopefully, we can get these two players. A 2029 first and a fifth round pick in 2028 is getting me up to number 40, I believe. And we kept our other second round pick at 25. So with this first one here, it is storming outside, by the way. So if I randomly fly away, do not be alarmed. Chad Jones. North Dakota State, he's only 21 as well. His ratings looks awesome too. This is an absolute gem. We got Blood, or what's his name? Marco something last year as well, who was a superstar. We might get a replica of that with Chad Jones. Hidden development as well. We lose Kendall Fuller, but we get a like for like replacement with this guy. He looks awesome. And now at 25, the outside linebacker should still be there. And Travis Miller is still available here at 25. We know he's a round one talent. He is very good a very well-rounded linebacker as well as you can see here a tackling a play rec b man b zone a pursuit a hit power a catching he's solid man our linebacking group is decent and it just got even better with the addition of travis miller and now with this third round pick and maybe future picks as well i might try to get a better running back i don't really know b rob just hasn't really been getting it done what would they say a third round pick for javante okay but check this out on the trade block there's a superstar jeremy davis here let's see if we offer our third round pick to the texans it is halfway there not gonna lie i really thought that would be accepted <laughs> and i'll just give away my second next year as well i don't really mind and look at this draft chad jones 77 overall and travis miller was a 76 both hit as well were those two players better than trading up and getting henry houghton who's only a 78 whoa i thought he would be like an 83 84 however of course the development trade is the big deciding factor i think i'm pretty happy that we didn't trade up if he was x factor then maybe but superstar i'm not too moved especially when you consider um chad jones was a top five talent and then travis miller was also a top five talent as well okay i think we low-key got blessed there hold up this guy was round three what the heck who's this goes to the cowboys as well in our division annoyingly he's only a star though travis miller better and those two players were our only two hiddens as well let's go ahead and reveal the corner chad jones generate best lineup and i'm looking straight at cb he is a star. That's all right. And I believe we are here in year five now, and there is no reason for this team to not be competing with a 98 Drake May now with Murrah. I spent all my staff points on like the attributes and stuff. This offense is so, so stacked. The run game has just been a little lacking, but hopefully the addition of Davis can help it out. And then defensively, we're an 89 overall. As you can see, five ratings higher than our offense. We have depth. We have studs at every single position group here. Emmanuel Forbes is up to an 88 as well. There's no reason why we should be in the bottom half of the ratings or the standings or whatever it is <laughs> and okay at midseason we're five and two top of the nfc east i did change actually both of my playbooks to atlanta offense and dallas defense and this formula seems to be working week one 38 to 7 there we beat the giants away from home our only two losses are to the chargers and the jets there but we even beat the cowboys 16 14 and okay i'm feeling good that's the best record we've had at midseason but we have drake may here and i don't know if you remember but last year he had no interest at all but because we signed taylor heineke to the team now as a mentor drake may is happy to stay Lennon Jackson's here as well. Jonathan Allen, we keep resigning on a one-year deal. Everybody else, gonna wait, gonna wait. We have one seed at 12 and five? <laughs> wait, what? I thought we missed the playoffs at first. I was about to say, we're the one seed. With a 12 and five record, you don't really see that too often. This division was so, so competitive as well, but we're the one seed, baby. Let's go. And for passing leaders, you got the usuals up there. Joe Burrow, Mahomes, Mac Jones. Whoa, our offense was actually 20th though. 
What in the world? But defense went up to number nine. <laughs> what in the world? Okay, Drake May, 3,800 yards from 29 touchdowns, three picks. I think that's the same ratio as last year. Brian Robinson, pretty good year, to be honest. Three put in a carry, but 16 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. He was actually a monster. Kind of. And no thousand yard receivers this season. Atlanta Falcons playbook is usually run heavy. Uh, Jahan Dotson, 999. He was as close as you can get, though. 932 for McLaurin. 800 for Njoku and Sandwich, only with 560. So, like, the offensive numbers look uglier, but the record is better. We're the number one seed. How can I complain? I will. I am willing to sacrifice um, that trade off. Jonathan Allen, 22 TFLs, though. 15 for Jackson and Payne. And sack numbers 10 and a half for both Rousseau and Jonathan Allen. Five for Landon Jackson there. Four and a half for Drawn Payne. Three for uh, Jamie Davis. Davis interceptions, Forbes as well, two for Newton. I, I don't know what that was, but yeah. <laughs> I just looked at the camera and said nothing. And in the divisional round, we have the 9-8 and eight Eagles. They finished third in our division here, make the playoffs, but not only that, win in the wildcard round as well, beating the stacked Vikings team as the number two seed, so a little bit of an upset there. They're looking to upset now the number one seed, of course, divisional rivals as well. There's a lot of animosity between these two teams. They're in 86, we're in 87. We're the favorites this year, and we beat them 21-14. And now, in the NFC Conference Championship, we have the 10-7 San Francisco 49ers. I think we hop in for this one. We haven't been here too often. I want to watch this team in case we do just lose, but they're in 90. You know, the Niners team. We're in 88, though. And let's kick things off. We do have home field advantage on our side, and we get the first touchdown of the game. However, they drive down, equalize just about immediately. We get another one, though. 14-10. End of the first half. We're going bang on with the Niners here. Third quarter is a little slow. They get no points, but they tie it up in the fourth. 17 all three minutes to go. Hold up, and we're on to the Niners. 12. First and 10 as well. Drake May, what do you got? I think that's going to be... Is that... Is that the... Who is that? Callaway? He's three rushes for one yard, and that was like a seven-yard game. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Where's the superstar guy? Literally gave up kind of the house to get for no reason. <laughs> Instead, we're just getting um that guy. And Brian Robinson who gets us the first down and gets us onto the one. He has two tuds today. And the two-minute warning is passed. The Niners do have three timeouts left. We got a punch in seven, though. And let's just rely on our defense here. B-Rob, B-Rob gets himself in and gets himself a hat trick of touchdowns against the San Francisco 49ers defense, which is no mean feat at all. We take a seven-point lead now in the conference championship. But now can our defense contain Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, McCaffrey, Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, all of these incredible players. Brock Purdy's actually not doing too much today, though, but they do get a good chunk right away. Already onto the 45 there. Purdy out of the gun, drops back once again, and it's Debo Samuel. And in the snap of a finger, they're already onto our 43. Two chunk plays right away. Now it's Kittle, but it's better defense by 2-1. Giving the Niners a second and 10. Purdy drops back once again. Your pressure is to him. And Jonathan Allen wraps him up, giving us a third and 21. What a play by Jonathan Allen. We've kept him... We've kept him on this team all throughout the years. Brock Purdy, our defensive line, is getting pressure like there is no tomorrow. Fourth and 21 to go to the Super Bowl. We get pressure again, and it's picked off. We're actually making it here. Come on, baby. Who is that? 24? Is that Briscoe? It is Briscoe, the second-year man, I believe. And the Niners with just two timeouts remaining means we should be good to clinch our ticket to the Super Bowl. Come on, baby. We beat the Niners and the Eagles? And both quarterbacks actually didn't even throw for a touchdown. <laughs> However, let's give our followers to Brian Robinson. 95 yards, three touchdowns. And Jonathan Allen had four tackle for losses and that huge sack at the end there. I don't know how that was 0.5. I swear that was all him. And in 2027, after finishing 12-5 and as the one seed as well, we're going to be getting the Jacksonville Jaguars 11-6 and six in the Super Bowl. Okay. MVP goes to the man we just knocked out. And we got no awards as well, but that's okay. We got our eyes on the bigger prize. And tell you what, spending your staff points on the coordinators to give yourself the um, attribute boost and whatnot goes a long way, honestly. I'm going to start doing that. I started doing it in my Cardinals reboot, and it immediately made a difference. So I'm going to start doing that from now on. It does take a minute, and it's quite tedious, but it goes a long way. I mean, as you can see here, everyone with morale, I think David and Joku went up to superstar, so that is pretty nice. Nothing else on the offense, but, man, it's looking pretty. And shout out B-Rob for that NFC Conference Championship performance. Defensively, I don't think we got anything as well. Sadly. Oh, no, Newton went up to star. That's pretty cool to see. And also, Travis Miller is a star. So getting him, 79 overall now. And then Jones at an 80 overall was probably better than the superstar edge. That was just about the same rating. But now in 2027, how is this Jags roster looking? They got a 99 ETN, a 96 T Law. Still a superstar dev, Tyson Campbell as well. I think these all three of these guys are in the same draft class too. So that's pretty cool. Josh Allen still going strong. Andre Sisko was also in the draft class with these three. So... 
What a freaking draft class for them. Martin Emerson, they signed. 91 overall superstar dev. Christian Kirk still around. Trayvon Walker up to an X Factor. Aluakon. Evan Ingram. Jalen House, a superstar. They drafted Fatanu in the 2024 draft out of UW, of course. Devin Lloyd. Solid team. They also got uh, Quinion Mitchell there, a nice little corner prospect in the same class as Fatanu. Ricky Stromberg. You little snake. <laughs> What's he doing over there? And here we go for all the marbles. We are an 88 squad. The Jags are an 87. Come on. Drake May versus T-Law. And let's get this first quarter out of the way. I believe we are in Tampa, Florida. The Jacksonville Jaguars get the first touchdown of the game, but we eagle seven all after one there. Second quarter on its way. The Jags are driving down the game, but we hold them to just three as we get seven. And we get another seven. 21-13 at the end of the first half there as Ice Spice performs at the halftime performance to give our team a little bit of a boost here we have a five point lead going into the fourth quarter and we have ball as well however it's an eight yard loss from a devon hamilton sack as we only scored three points there in the third quarter brian robinson on a second and 18 draw gets us a reasonable amount and our offense is doing really well today as you remember we were 20th in the league but today we have 355 total yards of offense drake may has a wide open man oh my god is that david and joku what a ball steps up in the pocket throws an absolute dot to david and joku and now gives us a pretty comfortable lead here as joku is doing whatever the hell he's doing come on drake may good protection as well from the o-line and the easiest touchdown you could imagine let's go as we now take a 12 point lead with just about eight minutes and 30 to go wait did they fumble on the kickoff they did fumble recovered by washington on the kickoff i just said that twice yeah you know what i mean <laughs> what in the world i've never seen them fumble on a kickoff that is crazy but here we are with a chance to really seal this game away drake may and empty on the 11 gives it to njoku i believe again drake may is having a freaking day hey i'm a poet and i ain't even know what may in empty again it's gonna be terry mclaurin this time giving us a third and three as drake may is three yards off a 300 yard performance honestly might be drake may to casper the ghost what was that do we take three here or do we go for it on fourth down and just try to seal this game away we have him pinned on the four as well we're gonna be going for i love it i love the play call trust and give your best player the ball and that would of course be drake may what do you got for me legacy down drake may for the super bowl that's the last thing. The last thing we wanted. However, actually, if it was incomplete, they would be on the four, and because they picked it off and ran out, they're on the two, so... 200 IQ, kind of? Not really? <laughs> what the hell was that, Drake Bay? <laughs> he was having such a perfect day, too, but tell you what, they are on the two now. If our defense can just um, stuff them back, which didn't happen. I don't know. T-Law, you don't got time like that, buddy. Stop celebrating. We have 404 total yards. I don't know what's gotten into our offense, but everybody slept good. Third and four. Easy completion there for Trevor Lawrence. They get the first down, but they most definitely have a ways to go. Still only on our 20, just about under five minutes to go here. Down 12 points, two possessions. Trevor Lawrence, what do you got? The defense, the pressure is getting to him, but he finds ETN wide open on the check down for another first down. T-Law on empty this time. Quick little slant. As it is the, another first down for the Jags. T-Law quick again here could have been picked off. Second and 10 now on their own. 41 pressure is there, but it is a screen pass to ETN. He's got room. He's got blockers as well, but we get him just short of the marker. As they're running, hurry up, play action to Travis ETN. Third and two, T-Law with nowhere to go. Did he get that out? Nope, it's going to be a sack. RD line has been incredibly impressive here in the playoffs so far. We saw it against the Niners and Purdy as well. We were getting home just about every single down. And once again here, T-Law with pressure in his face. What an absolute dime to Evan Ingram. Are you kidding me? Oh my, bro. I mean, what a pass by Trevor Lawrence with pressure in his eyes right over the DB as well. It's a good concentration catch from Evan Ingram. And it's um, it's definitely a game now that that uh, fourth down interception is could haunt us, especially as we only have a five point lead as well. So if they get a touchdown, I mean, we are in big, big trouble, I can't lie. And starting off the drive with an incompletion is the last thing we wanted. We want the time to um, keep ticking here. Drake May is taking it for himself here. What is this drive? Third and 14 now, and I mean, the Jags have momentum now. They have three timeouts now. Their def if their defense is going to stop here, they're going to be feeling pretty good that their offense can drive down once again. Drake May, we need a first down here, and he gets sacked. Fourth and 19 as well. They put us back nine yards. Devon Hamilton is having the game of his life. And here we go. We punt the ball back to the Jags here on their own 24. And we've really got to 
we got to stand behind our defense here and hopefully they can come through. The pressure has been there. The D-line has been good. But Trevor Lawrence seems to be unfazed right now. Left and right already into our half onto the 48. T-Law drops back once again here. Slings it out into the flat to Evan Ingram. And we get him down and stays in bounds, which is big. However, they do still have three timeouts. Up to not use any of them yet. Second and two. Trevor Lawrence out of the gun. Play action to Travis Etienne. And it's a wide open 80, bro. What is our defense doing? And in absolute no time, they are into our 16. Two timeouts remaining. We needed to get him down there. However, it's only a gain in two as they use timeout number two. But now on to the 14. Our defense needs to step up here. They drove down with ease between the 20s, but it's here. We need to stop them. And just like that, Trevor Lawrence has had a fourth quarter for the absolute ages here. Wow. And that fourth down stop is coming back to bite us bigger than ever here as they go for two. Going to pitch it to ETN here. And it's an easy easy conversion there we're down three points 40 seconds ago we do still have all three timeouts though what an absolute turn of events though we were up by 12 points they fumbled the kickoff we had the ball inside the four as well and just could not capitalize drake may drake may drake may what are you doing in this fourth quarter you just keep taking sack after sack after sack no homo now you just throw a dead ball there. I mean, what are you? What are we doing? Third and 22 now. I mean, we don't got to get it all here, Drake May, I swear. What are you doing? Before we hopped in, he was having the game of his life. 300 yards, four touchdowns. But this fourth quarter, he has been rattled. Whatever adjustments Jacksonville has made has absolutely gotten to him. And we can barely even pass the ball now. And steps out of bounds as well. Wow. Just like that. The Jags are in victory formation now. We we absolutely choked that Super Bowl way. 12 points. Had the ball inside their five as well to go up by three possessions. And we just, man, we could have kicked the field goal as well in that fourth down to go up 15 points. But decisions were made, bad decisions were made, and the Jacksonville Jaguars have come back from a big fourth quarter deficit to beat us in the Super Bowl now. Wow, I don't know what to say. What was the point of that? Really? I'm about to pull an Arthur Smith to Dennis Allen on him. <laughs> what the heck? Why'd they kick that? <laughs> Dennis Allen. I understand that. Brutal one to take. Brutal one to take. T-Law had a perfect QBR though. 158.3. 25 for 31. 431 yards, four tutties, no interceptions, and a good, good portion of these came in the fourth quarter when they were trailing as well. Drake May, a good portion of these came not in the fourth quarter. Everything before that, because in the fourth, he was terrible. Run game really wasn't there for both teams. 3.6 a carry for B-Rob, only three a carry for ETN. Evan Ingram had 10 receptions, 159 yards, and three touchdowns. Really. Really. McLaurin was good as well. And Joku, we saw get a touchdown. But more of the story, we could not guard Evan Ingram and Christian Kirks, it seems. Man, our defense absolutely folded. And in the regular season, it was our defense that was better than the offense. But come here in the playoffs, our offense did everything they could. Honestly, Devon Hamilton had the game of his life. We saw him get two sacks there. Andrew Green gets one as well. Josh Allen, we only get one sack as a whole. And it goes to Deron Payne. Jason Pinnock, we saw um, pick off Drake May as well. Generational choke job by us, man. Generational choke job by us. As the Super Bowl MVP is going to be none other than, of course, Trevor Lawrence. But tell you what, because we were this close, I was planning on ending the uh, reboot off here. Because we were that close, though, literally inches away, we're going to go one more year. There is zero reason why our team can't make it again. Here we got Sandwich fifth year, though. Landon Jackson, Jonathan Allen. Let's bring them back. Landon Jackson, remember, the CPU chose this dude after I was blacked out in the first year draft. He's back. And he's actually been quite good, right? Jonathan Allen, um... You know the wave, one-year deal. Trevin Wallace, we're going to let go. B-Rob, he is actually regressing down to an 83 now. Ernest Jones is staying, though. But I'm going to let everybody else go and go to free agency with 43 mil. And let's see, we might be able to restructure some people and get more money as well. And we were able to, giving us now 57 mil in free agency. And Josh Sweat is here and has full interest. He's the best player here by a country mile. And um, yeah, I'm going to give him what he wants. Honestly, Swift's here as well. We do not have Brian Robinson Jr. anymore, remember? We might... We might give him the bag too, I'm not gonna lie. All right, Sweat, Swift, White, Teller, and Keanu Benton. I had to give Swift so much because the Rams were just way ahead of me. And we actually do end up with him. Did we not get Sweat? 
Really? I bumped up his deal even more, too. Okay, but I ain't even gonna lie. I was really banking on us getting Josh Sweat there. However, we end up getting Keanu Benton back, Quinion Mitchell as well to be our CB4, and Tommy Thompson's back as well. First round pick, we're going TJ Shaw here, a left end out of Stanford. Looks like a beast on the D-line, but he is normal, so that kind of sucks. And I totally forgot we don't have our second round pick as well, because I traded it for the running back. I wasn't planning on going another year, which is why I just kind of threw the house for that running back, but... Yeah, here we are. <laughs> and I believe year six now, we saw what this team was capable of last season, almost minutes away from a Super Bowl. But as you can see, the team here, I'm just going to be simming to the end of the year. Hopefully we have another bye week like last. And end of the season, we finish 11 and six, second in the NFC East, but we are here. The Cowboys are terrible now. <laughs> we'll just skim past because I'm tired. 3,700 yards, 30 tuds, and seven picks for Drake May. Swift was a monster though. 15 tuds, 4.6 carry, and almost 1,400 yards. Jahan Dawson over a K, 11 touchdowns for him as well. McLaurin, okay, and Joku, 10 tuddies. 12 TFLs for Rousseau and Jonathan Allen. 12 sacks for Rousseau as well. Five for Jonathan Allen. Landon Jackson did cardio. Wild card, we're going to be going to Lambo to play the 11 and 6 Green Bay Packers. Same record. We barely beat up in an ugly one, though. 14, 6, 12, and 5, 91 overall Niners up next at San Fran as well. Yeah. This team sadly just could not get over the hump. Drake May has now developed to a 99 overall superstar X Factor as well. And I mean, he was good, most definitely, but man, I, I can't lie. He choked in that freaking Super Bowl fourth quarter, man. He disappeared. Brian Robinson was cool too, but you really need like that superstar running back to elevate your team to another level. And he every year he was averaging 3.8, 3.5 a carry. Sadly, McLaurin was a monster. Sandwich we got early on the 6-9 slot. Remember, he was incredible for us, made a big play in our first ever uh, playoff game as well and then john dodson was the um surprise of the video on the offense at least he developed to a 90 overall superstar now was pretty awesome and defensively this side was so bipolar rousseau was good for us jonathan allen was jonathan allen of course landon jackson was good but also not good i mean this season like what three sacks what the heck is that jamin davis though linebacker group was pretty solid all throughout the video corners were cool as well emmanuel forbes hey look at him we got him up to a 91 now i played db battle with him every year Never got a dev upgrade, sadly, though, so he remained at star, but has developed into a good cornerback one, which is what we, of course, wanted as well. Chad Jones was awesome. Good pick in the draft. Same with Briscoe, who we got in round two, I believe, traded up. Superstar dev right off rip. Cam Curl, 92 overall. Now, never de never developed to a uh, superstar dev, sadly, but 92 overall. I mean, he's still pretty good, if you ask me. Javon Holland, shout out to him. Probably our biggest acquisition in the um, free agency. And Percy Butler, I will never forget um, <laughs> your freaking developer trade upgrade. His breakout when I thought the message was a freaking assistant GM. Yeah, this team just couldn't get it done sadly we at least made the super bowl had some good playoff moments as well this team overall put up some good stats but just could not get to the next level and that is going to be wraps for this rebuild six years in now sadly couldn't get it done with drake may however if he just stays on course and keeps doing what he's doing here at the age of 24 you got plenty of years left with him i'm sure he will get it done it's not going to be with me, sadly, though. And I am recording this second part after Sunday now, so I do know what pick the commanders have. It is number two, which is most likely going to be Drake May. So I'm very excited to see, you know, what happens with all of that. This could be your sneak peek and glimpse into the future, what it would look like as well. It looks pretty good here. <laughs> and that is going to be all from me. My next rebuild, I'm looking to get either Michael Penix or Jaden Daniels. So look out for that one. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you made it to this point in the video. That would be much appreciated and you enjoyed. Leave a like as well. Comment down below the next team I should rebuild. And we will be doing those as soon as possible as well as some more challenge rebuilds as well because those have been popping off on my channel too. So all the franchise content, if you like it and aren't subscribed, subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Thank you to you all though that have because we've been growing very, very fast lately, which is awesome to see. But that is going to be all hope you all enjoyed and uh yeah see ya